Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and today I wanted to do a spoiler free book review for Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson, which is book one in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. I just finished this book this morning, so it might not be the best time to do a review, but I like doing reviews when everything's like fresh in my mind. I'm still deciding this wasn't a five star book for me. I think factoring enjoyment into it, I think it was probably a 4.5 or 4.75 stars which if you have seen any of my other videos, my DNFs videos, or like the books I wanna give a second chance, you'll probably be surprised because I did DNF this book the first time I picked it up at 20%. But as I said in that video, that's because I was on vacation, I was traveling and was hiking in the mountains in Montana. There was a lot of other things. I was reading on a plane. I just couldn't get into it. I picked it up this month when I had no distractions and I could solely focus on this book for the most part. I was reading a couple other books at a time, but they were completely separate and I adored this book. It's kind of hard to give a clear synopsis for this book, but I would say it's almost like we're following like three main groups of people for the most part. So we have the Empire, which is trying to continue to expand and conquer more areas of land to be in control of more people and rise higher in power than they already are. So that is the Malazan. Then we have the deserters uh, basically, or what? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could call them deserters, but they're almost like spies or people who are from the empire, but now they're against it due to certain events that have taken place where things got a little fishy and some murders that went down. And then we have this group of like an assassin's guild and thieves. And I, I feel like, at least from my perspective, those are the main points of views that we get. They are all having to team up and basically try to stop the empire from conquering this one city. But then we also have the moon spawn and which is like this floating city moon thing. It's a little bit blurry in my mind of exactly how that looks. And we're following who they side with, which I don't want to give any spoilers away. So that's like the, the basis of what's going on from my understanding. A lot of people have said that this book is just extremely hard to follow and understand. And I agree and I disagree with that. I think we do meet a large cast of characters and we're following a lot of perspectives, but in my mind, it wasn't harder to follow. Like if you've read The Way of Kings, it's not bigger or harder to follow than that series from my perspective at least. I guess it's more, things are a little more unclear when I guess some larger events take place and I'm still kind of wondering exactly what happened. So in my mind, that's where it gets a little bit harder to follow. But personally, I didn't find it hard to follow or keep track of who was who or whose side someone was on. In my mind, that was all pretty clear and pretty easy to understand. And I actually am a reader that I love getting a, a lot of different character point of views because it helps me not to be bored with this story. So as far as the characters go, you never got to know any character that much because we never spent that much time alone or in someone's head because we were always flashing to like different characters. So I would have liked to see a bit more of that. But in saying that, I still felt very attached to the characters and I cared about the characters. It wasn't to the point where if someone died, I was going to be like really sad, but I still did. I still did care about the characters, if that makes any sense. It was just kind of, it was done well, but could have been done better, I guess. Some of my favorite characters that I guess it would have been really fun to get a closer look inside their heads would be like Aramanda Rake. Um, the character who goes by Sari in the beginning and Tattersail. I think I'm still a little bit confused by the ending of what ended up happening to Tattersail. I really, really loved her and I, I, I maybe, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that. I'm sure at some point we'll pick up in the series and see where she went. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed those characters a lot. I've seen a lot of criticisms on this book based on really like technical stuff. 
and that's not what I tend to critique the most. So you're not gonna be getting that from my review. <laughs> like I said, I think that he did an on par job with making you care about the characters just enough to care about where the story was going. The world building was good, but not great in my opinion. I felt like I had a basic understanding of everything, but things could have been described a bit more. And in saying that, I'm definitely a reader who really prefers like I don't mind long paragraphs of explanations about the world or about history. Like I totally love when that happens because it just gives me a better understanding of everything that is going on around the characters and I can just picture everything a little better. And I know that's probably an unpopular opinion. Most people don't like reading long paragraphs about that. So it it, it is what it is. It's okay. I, I enjoyed it. Thought it could have been done a little bit better, but it was still good. I loved the magic in this book. It was very unique in my opinion. I still definitely don't have a good grasp and understanding exactly on how it works or like limitations and things like that. From what I can gather, it's like different um, sorcerers and different mages have these different warrens, I guess, that they can open up that are different types of magic almost. I just, I would have loved a lot more explanation of the magic system, but I still think that it was unique enough that it was done in a fun way that I enjoyed reading about it. And I think that I loved, I loved how much magic was used like in the different battles because I think that, I think that Eric Stevenson did an excellent job describing and writing the battles because I could always picture exactly what was happening. And sometimes as a reader, I'm someone who can struggle with, battle scenes or fights because I kind of I don't know if it's because I zone out because it's not my favorite thing to read about but I felt like in this book I always could picture exactly what was happening so I think he did an excellent job with that. I also liked the little bits of history that we got spread throughout. Just personally as a reader I always would prefer more to get just like a better grasp on this world but I think he did a fine job and a good job of kind of setting us up in this world just to begin because I, I'm sure that we'll get a greater understanding of it as the series goes on, or at least I hope so. So I think it was a good starting place. I really liked how political this book was as far as the plotting. There was a lot of plotting and like spying and back and forth, things like that going on. So I found that very intriguing and I, I enjoyed kind of having to piece together what was happening rather than just learning everything all in one time. It was nice to see it coming together as the book went on. With that being said, touching on another thing that's similar is that I feel like the whole time you're reading, you have so many questions and Steven Erickson, something will happen and you will have like, it doesn't make sense because you have these questions, but then he always later in the story is able to answer just the bare minimum of what you need to know for something to make sense. So I feel like he does a good job of answering questions later on in the book of things that are necessary for you to know, but with still leaving you wanting more and wondering in a lot of things. Personally, one of my favorite things to read about in fantasy is when there are gods that can like manipulate or control or at least interact with the humans or there's lots of different races so with those races i love seeing that so that was very interesting to me to read about in this book i really really enjoyed those aspects and i hope that we get to explore them even more in the next books i like how there were basically like other realms that some of the other characters got to go to there's definitely i'm not gonna lie there's definitely several events that took place in this book that I just have questions about and I'm like, okay, so what actually happened to the kid? Like what? I, I wanna like talk to somebody about it. I have all these questions. <laughs> if you are a big fan of this series and you are able to really describe what happened in this book, comment down below so we can have a conversation and I can like clear up some of the events that took place because I feel like it would be a great book to read again because I think I would get a lot out of it the second time. I'm a little bit nervous because I heard um, somebody doing the review of this book saying that the second book follows like totally new characters, which that will make me a little bit sad, but hopefully they're still fun and interesting characters because I feel like at this point I've just gotten attached to these characters. I liked 
the just variety of different like types of characters we met assassins and thieves and people of the empire and sorcerers and mages and high lords and people that are supposed to be basically royalty so I did like the overall cast of characters and the way they all interacted with each other and their friendships and there were a couple characters that I definitely didn't care for that maybe got what they deserved but yeah, overall, it's hard because I, I still have so many questions. So I feel like there's not too much more that I can say about it other than if you like multiple perspectives, if you like having to kind of piece together what's happening, if you like really interesting and unique magic, then I would definitely give this a try and pick this book up because I... I don't know if you like those things I can't imagine anyone not enjoying this book if you're somebody who just likes to fully understand everything and you want the magic system super cut and clear and this is what can be done and this is what can't be done and you need to be able to fully comprehend everything that's happened and limitations and you want to really spend a lot of time inside one character's head or just a couple characters heads then maybe don't pick this one up but I thoroughly enjoyed it like I said probably about a 4.5 stars for me and I already like I literally cannot wait to pick up Dead House Gates because I um I just want to know what happens next I think that the way that the book ended was very intriguing and kind of left you left you at a point where you're definitely wanting more. It's not wanting more in a bad way where you just feel like completely lost. It's just you have just enough to satisfy you but you just want more. Those are most of my thoughts right now. I know that was pretty scatterbrained because I didn't take any notes about this for this review at all but please comment down below and have a conversation with me if you've read this book because I would love to know more and have some questions answered and just chat with you guys about it because I don't know anybody in real life that has read this book and I'm dying to talk to talk about it more. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.